Hey everyone, Daryl here with Tested. Today I'll be walking you through how I made King Atlan's recording device inspired by the movie Aquaman. I started off modeling the device in Cinema 4D. I knew I wanted to add the lighting effects as seen in the movie, so I opted to print the model on the Piopoli Phenom using Sierra Tech's Simple Clear Resin. Once the print was finished, cleaned and cured, this is what I ended up with. The print did suffer some issues as I believe during the hollowing process, the inner walls may have been too thin, causing the inside to tear a bit, but the outside turned out great. For the lighting, I opted to use Adafruit's featherboard along with a NeoPixel LED strip. Here's a quick look at what the lights will look like in the device. Next, it was time to clean up the print. Working with this resin, I always make sure to wear gloves, a respirator, along with good airflow throughout my workspace. I used a pair of nippers to cut off some of the support structures that were left behind from the initial cleaning process. I then started sanding the device with 220 grit sandpaper. I was not that concerned about a super smooth finish as the device in the movie has a slight texture. After a quick rinse, I moved on to masking off the details. This part of the process was very time consuming and tedious. For masking the details, I used Maskol. Maskol is a liquid rubber solution that can be applied to surfaces that can later be peeled off after paint has been applied. I started off by using a very thin paintbrush, but I kept having clumps of Maskol adhering and drying to the brush. So I opted to use a sculpting tube with a silicone tip. So when the mask hole would start to dry on the tip, I can easily remove it and keep going. After a few hours of masking, I moved on to painting. I applied a layer of filler primer, which really helped me see the details embedded in the device. I followed up with a layer of gloss black to help prevent any light leak outside of the mask areas. Once that was dried, I applied a layer of hammer texture bronze to give the device some texture. I followed up with a light mist of antique bronze. And the final layer of paint being Krylon foil gold. The device in the movie was heavily weathered, so I mixed up a wash of black and burnt umber acrylic paint and applied it to the device and used a sponge to dab off the excess wash. I then dry brushed and dabbed with a sponge some Vallejo Rust airbrush paint thin with water.
I also use Rub and Buff's Gold Antique on the edges of the device to add to the weathering effect. Once all the paint was dry, I proceeded to remove the mask off. Again, this was very time consuming. I used an X-Acto knife and a metal sculpting tool to remove the mask off. As I was removing the mask off, I would shine a light into the device to ensure I was removing most of the mask off from the areas that were masked off. I then moved on to the lights. I uploaded a modified code to the Adafruit Feather to set the color of the lights and get the sequence I was going for. I then wired up the board and added on an on and off switch, and the device was ready to be assembled. And here is the final prop. I hope you all enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed this build. So we're actually doing a little bit uh, something new this week. We're doing a project recap uh, because I wanted to hear more about this prop. Daryl, I have you on the line. Daryl, how you doing? Good, and you? How about you, Norm? Doing great. Uh, watch the video you put together as everyone out there just did. And that prop looks so beautiful. Is that it right there? Yes, this is it. Um, yeah, it, it, it came out better than I expected. And so this is like, it's King Atlan's uh, recording device. Um, I assume you chose it because you wanted to experiment with the translucent resin that you're working with uh, and a way to light up something and have it look like it's you know, solid, old, but also kind of have this energy inside of it. Yep. So, I, you know, after watching the movie, um, I thought it'd be a great prop, like you said, to experiment with the clear resin. Um, Kiopoli, Sierra Tech has a clear resin. Um, it's actually their simple line, and it was really simple to print with. And I really wanted to, to showcase it, have something that I can really showcase the, the clear print on. And I landed on this project. I haven't seen anybody tackle this, so I thought it would be, you know, a great project to kind of tackle and see if I can do it. And and it came out, it came out pretty well. The shape is almost really deceptively simple because it's a cylinder, but it has yes. all these fine engravings and yes. engravings that actually matter because of what you're trying to do with the masking, like how fine the resolution of those cracks and stuff. Can you talk about the modeling of this, both the exterior and also the core? Sure. So the core is just a simple cylinder, um, and it just has some details that extrude out from the bottom of the actual um, device. Um, so that, that part initially was simple. Um, after reviewing the footage, I went, the symbols were the hardest thing to find, the Atlantean engravings on it. Um, so I Googled some Atlant Atlantean fonts, um, and I came across two different kind of fonts. And this one was the closest one that actually matched the ones that were in the, on, on, on the prop in the movie. Um, they're not exact, but they were very close to it. Um, and Cinema 4D, is in which I modeled this with, uh, has a tool in it um, called a volume mesher. And basically, you can take um, vector shapes and apply it to the model, and it'll cut these grooves into it. Now, this could easily be done in um, ZBrush, and I'm still learning that. But um, I, did, I took the fonts, bought them into Cinema 4D, used that tool, and um, got a clean engraving on the actual cylinder, which gave me a clean print in the long run. Um, the inside is hollowed out because I needed to, you know, had the lights running in it. And I just made a simple enclosure for the bottom that I can hold the switch on and literally just used a piece of, P a piece of PVC pipe um, to run the lights on. And it was pretty, a pretty simple um, setup on the inside. Is that relief? Is it uh, like the same depth wrapped around the cylinder, like cylindrical surface? Um, so it's like at every side, it's a certain depth. Is that how it works? Yeah. So basically, with um, resin printing, the best thing to do was hollow out the the model. Um, so there is some hollow spacing in this um, to save on resin. But I did run into issue with this one. So I may have hollowed it out too much. 
Um, I find that maybe four millimeters is kind of like the sweet spot. Um, but for this, I think I hollowed it a little bit too much and the, the inner walls were already thin, thin enough. So I didn't need to hollow it. I was just kind of, kind of trying to save on resin. Um, and I did run into some issues on the inside, which really didn't matter because um, nobody was seeing the inside anyway. But the outside came out fine. It actually tore, I think, from the, for the peel force from the actual resin printer, tore the inside. Um, and again, like I said, it, it didn't make much of a difference. It probably kind of helped in the long run because it diffused the lights on the inside. But outside of that, the outside turned, turned out great. It's like all this extra consideration you have because you actually care about the inside structure, like your, yes. the thickness of the outside wall and the thickness of the inside wall for light um, because it's like, it has to look like carvings. It can't just look like a yep. hole, right? It actually exactly. still has to look solid on the inside. Um, yep. And then cleanup, um, pretty, pretty similar? Yeah, cleanup was pretty straightforward uh, with, you know, with printing on resin, you have to um, take the proper precautions, you know, wear uh, a respirator, gloves, because um, the skin air, you know, irritates the skin. Um, once I pull it off the printer, um, clean off all the supports, clean it with 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol, um, cure it under a UV light. Once that's cured, uh, it was just simple sanding. This is much more easy to sand than uh, a PLA or um, any kind of one of those filaments. This literally took, I would say, maybe a good 15, 20 minutes to sand. And I wasn't trying to get a perfect surface because in the movie, um, it did have some texture. So when you remove the support sometimes, it leaves little um, like crevices and little fine um, holes in it. And I was perfectly fine with that because I wanted to have that antique look. Um, so it really added to the, to the look at, in the long run. All you're trying to do is get rid of print lines. Uh, and it sounds like the bulk of the work was actually the applying of your liquid masking medium. Yes, so that, that was very tedious <laughs> and it was a long process. Actually, I think all in all, I spent about four hours applying it and taking it off. Um, and I had issues with the, I, so I used a product called Maskol. It's a liquid rubber um, and you could apply it on like paint, it dries, you could paint over it and then peel it off, um, similar to liquid, liquid silicone. Um, the issue I had was that I've had that mask off for a long time and it lumped up on me. Um, and nowhere in Virginia Beach sells that product. And it would have took like three or four days for, in order for me to order it and get it in. And I didn't have that time. So I was doing some research and you can thin it down with water. Um, so I thinned it down and let it sit for a few, a few minutes and I was able to use it. The only thing that happened was because there were um, lumps and clumps in the bottle already, Every time I would pour some out and then use a, uh, a paintbrush, it would clump up on the paintbrush and dry and adhere to the paintbrush. So what I did was I took a sculpting tool with a silicone tip and used that and used that to apply it to the details. And that worked perfectly. Anytime that I would get any clumps or the mask would start to dry, it was just a matter of just taking my finger and peeling it right off and keep on applying. Yeah, I mean, we've used things like uh, there's liquid latex that we've used mm -hmm. and it seals up pretty firmly, but it's yep. all about that working time and how delicate it is, right? Because you're yeah. balancing the, the kind of viscosity of whether it can fill these crevices and create the like, where you have these edges, because you don't want it to spill onto the surface because it's not like this yep. weathering effect. But then at the same time, you know, it's going to come back to haunt you when you have to peel it away. Um, and so we've d done things like a, a toothpaste as masking, but it's not nearly oh, wow. as easy to, to move around. It doesn't perfectly okay. fill a crevice. It's more like big blots of it, and that's easy to wash away, but it's, again, these, these trade-offs. Yeah. yeah, and with this, I wasn't too concerned about getting really clean as long as I got it in the details, again, because this was so heavily weathered. And then when you look at the uh, footage from the movie, the um, parts that actually light up, um, they weren't fine, clean lines. Um, I guess this was supposed to be um, a, a, a ancient, an ancient piece. So those lines did have some weathering to it. And it worked out perfectly um, because, again, taking this off was a task in itself. Um, yeah, so it, 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 was, it, was, it, was, it was tedious, but it was worth it in the end. And, and just like every masking you would do, whether it's with tape or with a medium like this, like you don't know if it's going to work until yes. you peel it off. So you have all this built up stress of like, did I apply <laughs> enough, did I miss a spot? And at the same time, you're covering it with these layers of, 
of paint. Can you walk me through yep. those layers of paint? Because some of that, like the first layer, that black layer, uh, help, you know, help, help seal the masking in, I guess, and fill up those edges. Yep. So um, after I sanded it, I actually, I rinsed it off first, um, and then I applied primer filler to it. Um, and I really wanted to do that so I can see the details because up until this point, up until that point, you know, I had a clear piece and I really couldn't make out all the details other than the render that I had. Um, so that actually, you know, brought in, like I was able to see what I was working with. Once I was satisfied with that, I used um, a layer of black gloss and two things for that. Uh, I used black in particular so it can um, blot out any of the light leak that I would have. And then also um, to add to the metal uh, spray paint that I would add on afterwards. Um, so I followed that up with uh, bronze hammer texture, um, Rust-Oleum spray paint right out of the, right out of the can. Um, and that gave it a little bit of texture. Um, and it was just building upon layers upon um, paint. Um, so after that, I did a coat of um, antique bronze. And then I misted it with some uh, Krylon foil gold. And then I think I went back again with the bronze texture and kind of spattered it all over and then went back over it with another coat of the foil gold. And once I had that, that was kind of like my base. And then I moved on to weathering. Right. It's one of those things where I, I love the, the extra going back to the texture, paint, and then and, and all of that is helps you. I'm sure when you're seeing, you are have it in front of you, you can read mm -hmm. those layers with that black gloss underneath to really make it look like both kind of earth-like, like, you know, it's, it's yep. organic, it's, but it also has this metallic look to it. Yep, and then when I bought it up, my wife, the first thing she said was, it looks like it's antique, like it's been sitting around for a while. Um, I, in terms of weathering, I did um, standard black acrylic mixed with burnt ombre watered down. Um, but what I, what I did differently was I didn't apply it and then wipe it off. I applied it and just dabbed it with a, a, a sponge. And that left, um, it broke up the, the color of the gold. Um, and then I had gold parts still peeking out through the, t through the um, actual weathering. Um, and then I watered down some Vallejo rust um, acrylic paint. And I used a sponge again and dabbed it on. And that added another layer of weathering. And then I used um, antique gold rubbing buff and just hit the edges. And that was pretty much it. Upon removing the, the mask all, what I did notice was that when I was removing it, some of the gray from the primer, and this is what I would probably would do differently, um, when I was removing the mask all, some of the gray was showing, peeking through from, from the gray primer. So if I had to do it again, I wouldn't apply the gray primer, I'd probably use a black primer. Um, but it worked out in the end because the, um, I went back and once I removed the mask all, I um, weathered it again just the details and it was because it was watered down the light was still able to peek through it right and that's a little bit of diffusion the unevenness it's not as crisp yep. sometimes that led lighting can be a little too crisp and you don't want to be able to yep. see like the just the different diodes there uh, so it's just yep. a strip wrapped around the 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 core yep it's a strip wrapped around the core i can take it out and show you um if i can get this off so basically it's a um uh, i have a add fruit feather board in here, um, simple code that I modified to get the color and the sequence that I wanted, um, loaded that up to the board, um, soldered it, and wired it up, and this wrapped this around. And I have it hot glued right now because at some point I may want to use it for a different project. I did um, cut an opening in here so I can charge the battery. I have one of the batteries from Adafruit in here. Um, I just literally had to charge it last night, um, so it's easy for me to get the cord in here to charge it. Um, have the on and off switch at the bottom. It's held in by magnets as well. And just a simple on and off. And that's pretty much what is powering that's the great. inside of it. That's so nice. It's a great pattern. And then like, yeah, combined with those extra laser paints, like it's showing off like, yeah, the material, the paint finish. It, just, it makes something that otherwise looks like almost like a Amazon Alexa speaker look like this really <laughs> awesome old ancient thing. Yep. And somebody had, um, they said at first glance, it looked like a, uh, like a cover for an Alexa. So I thought yeah. that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it could, be, it could be a mod in the future to, to cover yep. your speakers with one of those things. You know, it's a recording, it's an awesome. audio device. Yeah, yep. awesome, awesome. And it's an idea like you went through this whole process because you wanted to make the prop, but also 
to try the translucent resin, to try lighting from the inside. Mm -hmm. And that's something yep. we see in so many different props and even costume yep. pieces, that type of masking and that type of lighting. Uh, and so yep. it sounds like you know, this can be applied in future, future projects too. Yep, and I really wanted to have a chance to use Adafruit's products. Um, I've seen them used throughout cosplays, um, you know, to light up different pieces of armor and stuff like that. And I thought this would be, the, uh, you know, a great project, especially in the way the movie had it lighting up in the sequence that it was going. The Neo Pixel lights were perfect for this project. Any other special considerations for the printing process? Because you knew you were going to be printing with, you know, this, this hollow inside or, or modeling a certain way or using this type of resin. Anything different? Uh, than you would be normally printing in it? Um, not really. The only thing that I took into consideration, again, um, was the hollowing of this. I wanted to make sure that um, it, the walls weren't too thick so that the lights wouldn't actually um, peek through when I did the masking. Um, but it all turned out, this resin in particular, once you cure it, it does have a yellow tinge to it, which I wasn't really worried about because um, prior to this project, I did a, a, another project which I used lighting with the same kind of resin and it worked fine. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't tint or um, mess with the color of the LED lights that you put in there. So um, it turned out perfect to be honest with you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing and diving deep into this. Uh, for folks who have additional questions about how you printed it, how you modeled it, uh, feel free to please post those in uh, the comments below and uh, Daryl will see you at the next project uh, you'll be working on and I think we can tease that you're actually testing uh, an impressive 3D printer for us at the moment so uh, yes. we'll hopefully be able to share more of that next month. It's so good to see you Daryl, so good to see good the to prop see you too, Norm. and uh, we'll see everyone next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.